Hey guys, Mark Holthy here, Canadian immigration lawyer, founder of the Express Entry Law Facebook group, and the founder, I guess, of the Canadian Immigration Institute, period, and its YouTube channel and all the other places you're finding me. As you can see, I'm experimenting with a whole host of things right now. I've got this fancy banner down here. Check this out, guys. Let me see if I can actually make it appear and disappear. I thought I could. Let's see. Oh, yeah, check this out. See, I can make that appear, disappear. I got all kinds of things. Oh, there goes the banner. I actually like that. It's kind of got a different look to it. Yeah, I'll experiment. But anyways, this is why I'm here today. Technically, it's still the same day. And I did one tip already. But I'm liking this so much. It's going to be a, this is going to be a double tip day. So you guys are getting times two. So it's a little bit later. You can see it's dark outside. I'm experimenting with my lighting. I've got this new uh, program to help me not look like my bags are under my eyes and I'm not getting any sleep. Because in reality, guys, I am so excited about the future. I'm so excited about all of these little express entry tips of the day and and just all the different ways that I can reach out to you to give you information that you can actually trust on express entry. So the question that came in today a little bit later that I just had to show you guys is this one. Does my education have to match my work experience? So when people are applying through express entry, as all of you know, you have to demonstrate that you have performed, well, basically all of the duties associated with the job that you want to get credit for. And in legal words or legal terms, to get credit for your foreign work experience, you have to have performed a substantial number of the main duties and all of the activities in the lead statement on the National Occupational Classification System for whatever job you're looking to get credit for. So if you want to say that you were a civil engineer, well, the National Occupational Classification System, which is now the NOC, NOC 2016, that NOC description for your profile, if it's a civil engineer, well, you need to demonstrate that you've done those duties. But people ask me this question right here. See, does my, ex my education have to match the work experience? So in the case of, a, of an engineer, usually you're going to have some form of professional designation. But generally speaking, let's say you're a food service supervisor at McDonald's or some position like that. I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to share my screen with all of you guys. And I don't even know what this is going to look like when I share it. Let's see here. I've got another image. Does that interfere? Eh, not too bad. Let's see. It might interfere with my my picture. Oh yeah, I'm kind of cut off there. That's all right. You know, I'm going to see if I can get rid of my own ugly mug. I'm going to go back into my program here and I'm going to see if I can get rid of my do do do. Let's see here. Camera overlays. Wow, you guys are beta tests. I am totally beta testing with all of you guys. Let's see here. I can't see how to turn off my image. Whatever. I don't care. So here I am. I'm a little bit <laughs> I'm a little bit below my banner. Oh, hey, check it out. I know what I can do. I'm going to turn this off. Am I turning it off? Let's see. There. Oh, pretty good. That's not bad. So it's out of the way, but now my the, this is here. There we go. Okay, so here I am. We're back. Here's the image and I'm actually going to uh take this page and blow it up for you guys. Nice and big. Here is the source of all goodness. In other words, these are the ministerial instructions, and that's a big word, but these are the ministerial instructions associated with the express entry system. And so this is where if someone, and I'm going to click find here, I'm going to find within this, if I can search for it here, I'm going to search for right there, foreign work experience. And because like I said, guys, I don't just tell you, I show you. So we're going to zip through this till I get down to the actual section. Okay. So we're just about there. It's section 25. I guess I could have gone straight there. It's right here. All right. So this is section 25 of those ministerial instructions. And you can see here, it gives an explanation of what foreign work experience is. 
And this is important because it's not just a matter of understanding what the immigration website says, but it actually matters where you're finding the information and whether it's actually law or regulation that you're relying upon and not just policy or some creative person on uh, an immigration forum or a Facebook group kind of like ours. So I want to show you exactly the source. So remember, the question is, does my education have to match my work experience? So here's what you need if you want to claim your foreign work experience. You can see here, it has it right here. And you know what, guys? I am going to make this easier for you guys to see if I can do this. There we go. Okay, now let's see if it's, hopefully it's not interfering too much. All right, so here we go. So we've got our, uh, we're going to go back to 25 here. Here's the source. So you can see to claim foreign work experience for the purposes of section 23 and 24, and that is the skill transferability section within Express Entry. So to get those extra 100 big points, you need to be able to show that you've got foreign work experience. And in order to maximize those big points, at least three years. So we're going to go through here. You can see it has to be a skill level A or B. I'll jump back to the NOC and I'll show you. But that's within the National Occupational Classification System. Okay, it has to be full time. It has to be within, right here, the 10 year period preceding the day in which the points are assigned. In other words, you get your ITA. And it has to be paid, so it can't be volunteer work. Do you see? This is where it all comes from, guys. But that's not it. The question that you are focusing on, it's still on the education side, doesn't need to match my work experience. But I want to show you what's missing from this. So if you can see here, you have to choose your four-digit code. It says right here. And you guys know that. You have to pick your code. And then here is the magic. You must have performed the actions described in the lead statement. Okay, so what's the lead statement? Well, I'm going to open up a new window here. And I'm going to search knock. We'll see if 2016 pops up. There it is. Okay. And I think we were searching for food service supervisor. Bam. Let's open that up. And yes, this is a skilled occupation that would allow you to qualify under skill level B for express entry. So here's a food service supervisor. So what are the, what's the lead statement? It's this right here. And what does the law tell us? The law tells us that we must have performed the actions described in the lead statement. So what is it? Well, they supervise, direct, and coordinate the activities of workers who prepare, portion, and serve food. All right, great. That Those are the activities in the lead statement. And then it gives some other helpful advice on where they're employed, which is basically everywhere food is served. Hospitals, healthcare establishments, cafeterias, catering companies, and other food service establishments. So basically everywhere. So that's the lead statement. Let's take a look now at the rest of this section 2B of section 25. So section 25 2B says right here, as well as a substantial number of the main duties, including all the essential duties as set out in the National Occupational Classification. So what are the main duties? We go back here. Here they are. They're listed. So we need to perform a substantial number of those main duties. And what does substantial mean? Well, I don't know. I've heard lots of people say about 75%, which probably is about right. So at least 75%. But some of these are definitely essential. And some are, what do you call it? Optional. That's the word I'm looking for. So I would consider the essential duties, these ones right here, and this is another demystification of the process. What are, what are the essential ones? It's these ones here. And why are they essential? Because these ones here say may. And may means that they're not essential, but they could be included. So there you go. If you are performing all of the, the activities in the lead statement and a substantial number of the main duties, of your profile description for your profile, remember this is just for food service supervisors, yours is going to be different. Then based on the law, which I'm showing you here, yes, you have to fulfill some other requirements, which you know, 30 hours of work per week, 
It has to be full-time, at least that's what's considered to be full-time, 30 hours per week. And you can see here that it has to be in one occupation, at least when you're assessing the eligibility for the federal skilled worker programs. And so that's essentially it. And if you look through here, it shows different things. But guys, do you see anything about education having to match work experience? And I know I took a little bit longer to get to this, but the answer is no. So what is the, what is the education we're referring to? It's right here. People are wondering if they have to meet these requirements in order to claim the work experience that they have. So if someone's working, you can see here, if you want to work as a food super supervisor, it says here that secondary school is usually required. Well, that means that you don't have to even have high school. But it does say here that completion of a college program in food service, administration, hotel and restaurant management, or related discipline, or several years of experience in food preparation or service, and here's the magic, are required. So if you were relying upon employment, uh, these employment requirements, to determine whether or not you qualified for this, if you didn't have these things here, in particular the bottom ones that are required, then you wouldn't be able to work in the occupation. And in fact, if you're applying for a work permit to Canada under the labor market impact assessment process or the temporary foreign worker program, you would need to be able to demonstrate that you had this. Otherwise, you wouldn't get your work permit approved. But for express entry, everyone, it doesn't apply. We, you remember, we looked at this. <clears throat> and if you look at it in detail, this is what it is, right? There's nothing about education. So the short answer to all of this is that, and I'm going to go back to my regular screen now, and I don't even know what's appearing here. Hey, there I am. And I can also go back and let me add this on. And I can add this on. Oh, yeah, look at this. This is gold. So you can see, guys, that for the answer to this question here, your education doesn't need to match up with the work experience that you are trying to claim. All right? This was longer than I intended. It's way longer. I appreciate everybody that's contributed, that's been asking questions, that's been, you know, basically um, uh, always supporting me in creating these. You guys are awesome. And you can see I was, um, I've got a little bit of background noise here going. This program that I got, it's really cool. I actually really like it. I can move all this stuff around. And you guys are, yes, you guys are my guinea pigs. So I apologize. These are going to be rough and tumble. But the content is the bomb. I'm teaching you guys. So it may not look pretty, but you're going to get the information. And eventually I'll figure it out. You know, when this is exploding and, you know, this, the Canadian Immigration Institute actually has enough revenue to um, justify hiring all these professional videographers, I'll still be making awesome content, but it'll actually look good too. So thanks guys for tuning in. I appreciate all the thumbs up that I see here. I appreciate all the participation of everybody as always. And I will see you guys again soon. Take care.